So in 2012, I was actually in this space as a legislative intern. I was 17 and was a high school senior at Everett High School. And the experience changed my life. It did two things for me. One, it showed me that I needed to continue my education. I needed to go off to college because former state representative Mary Waters told me to. And at that time, she was the smartest, most savvy legislator I'd ever experienced. In fact, she was the only one that I'd ever uh, been connected to and had the pleasure of working with. The other thing that that experience taught me is that I wanted to spend my life dedicated to public service. And so I went off to college. I went to Central Michigan. And again, it changed my life. It put my life on a path from poverty to prosperity. And I know the transformative experience at that college campus is one that I wanted to dedicate my life to doing, not just for myself, but for kids all across the state. And so while I never imagined that I'd be a state representative, I knew that I would always be a champion for post-secondary education, making sure that we were connecting individuals with the skills they needed to meet the labor market demands of today. When I was named the ranking Democrat on the Higher Education Appropriations Committee, it was like a dream, because I knew I wanted to roll up my sleeves and do what I promised that I would do the moment I got that piece of paper after college, expand opportunities for everyone. And so as we continued to work through that budget process, I started to realize that this budget would fall extremely short. The fact that we have had decades of disinvesting in education wasn't just numbers on a balance sheet that didn't really add up. It was going to have an impact on the lives of men and women, boys and girls across this entire state. So it's been disappointing that although this budget doesn't have a cut, it is a very minimal increase. And I know that our students deserve better. It's interesting that in this chamber, we continue to say that we care about the lack of skilled trades and that we need to connect people with the skills they need to meet the demands. But then we fail to provide higher education institutions with the funding they need to actually train the workers. We will announce that we want Michigan to be a world-class powerhouse economy once again. But then we expect the doctors and the scientists and the teachers to get astronomical debt in order to obtain those skills and degrees. We're talking out of both sides of our mouth. So serving in this chamber, not as an intern, but as a legislator, I have been charged with listening to the voices of Michiganders each and every day. And my lens has been on higher education. So I've listened to economists who tell us that 60% of the jobs in our state will require degrees and credentials, specifically bachelor's degrees by the year 2020, next year. I've toured college campuses and talked to administrators and college presidents and I've been able to see the innovations that are happening on those college campuses, specifically our research institutions, which are not only educating, educating and training our students, but they are also helping to treat and cure some of our most challenging diseases. I've also been listening to the business community, which I know both sides of the aisle are listening to, and they are telling us time and time again, they are begging us to invest in higher education in order to give the skilled workers uh, in our state a chance at actually being in these manufacturing jobs and all of these different uh, corporations. They need educated workers. But above all of those voices I've been listening to, I've been listening to students and families, some in which are right down the street at Lansing Community College or on the banks of the Red Cedar at Michigan State University. And when I've been listening to these students and their parents, they are telling us that the decisions that we are making in this chamber has given them a clear indication that we do not care about adequately funding education. It is a clear indication that we don't want education for all students, specifically low-income students, students who are first in their family to obtain a college degree. And what they're telling us is that college is not for everyone that unless you have college 
educated parents or come from the right side of the tracks, that education is something that is a private good and not a public one. So Mr. Speaker, this budget in many ways ignores all of those voices. And today we have an opportunity to listen. I know that we need to fix the roads. I mean, Lansing has some of the worst ones. We all swerve around them, right? I know we have to fix the roads, but the people in this community and across the state are telling me that we can fix the roads, but we can't uneducate students, right? We'll always have to fill these potholes. And so I urge my colleagues to join me in voting no on this bill because our students deserve better. Their parents deserve better. Our workers deserve better. And I have confidence in each and every one of you that we can do better. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.